Here's something mundane that I get given on a fairly regular basis, a uh, remote control that uh, doesn't work. Uh, there usually many and various reasons. Things get spilt on it, or the buttons get stuck, or corrosion in the, in the, in the battery. We don't know at this time. Uh, we can always test by pressing the buttons and looking at the camera. Uh, cameras are sensitive to uh, infrared, uh, so we should see the, the LED flashing, although we can't see it uh, with, the, with the naked eye. So uh, clearly need to investigate further. So the first thing to do is to look in the battery compartment. Often find uh, batteries which are significantly out of date or some other issue. So looking here uh, I can see fairly immediately that there is corrosion on this contact here. Um, looking at the battery date, I'm not sure if you can make that out on camera, it's 2019 so the batteries uh, seem to be reasonably new. People change the batteries but fail to, uh, to clean the contacts up. Yeah, so 2019. So the, the culprit here, well the first thing that we we have found is that this connection here is, is corroded. So we need to get that cleaned up. So just for completeness we'll open this up to see that there's no other corrosion or other problems inside. Uh, there's no screws that I can see holding it together so the usual arrangement is with an old uh, Stanley knife blade, utility knife is to get into the get into the groove and oops Alright, so now we can check inside. These contacts here look like they could do with a clean. The contacts actually on the board look look to be okay, so look, we'll give them a, a once over anyway. Uh, whilst we have the thing apart, you can see that there's traces of uh, ingress of some substance there, so we'll clean this board up. Um, we'll just check. Just checking there, just gently wiggling the LED to make sure that these contacts are not broken, because that can often happen if the if the remote has been dropped and uh, and this been, has been banged. But those joints look look okay. Uh, before I come back and clean that, I'm going to take this guy away and just with the usual a uh, little bit of washing up liquid and some warm water, and I'll put that out in the sun to dry. And you see all this crud. There's nothing worse than uh, somebody else's remote control, unless of course it's their vacuum cleaner. Hmm. So to clean up this little bit of corrosion on here. Uh, what I like to use is vinegar. Uh, this vinegar um, is for cleaning, so this is not something you put on your chips uh, and it's less expensive. So just get a drop of this. And a trusty toothbrush. You'll see various recipes on the internet. Um, for me, the, just the white vinegar works. Uh, the batteries are, are alkaline batteries, and uh, you know, clues in the name, alkalina. Uh, so, to clean up a alkali from my limited chemistry, you need an acid. So, lemon juice even. Let's uh, clean that up. All looks good, we'll let that dry off. And just for the avoidance of doubt, 
give these guys a clean up too. And that's good, just let that dry. Vinegar won't go to waste, don't worry, we'll be cleaning something else with it. The next part of the clean up uh, involves cleaning these, uh, these little carbon coated traces that the, the buttons push against. Uh, not sure if you can make it out on the camera here, but there are various places where it's obvious something has leaked into the into the remote at some point. Uh, one doesn't want to think about it too closely. So the cleaner of choice in this instance, um, I use IPA. Uh, not Indian Pale Ale, but uh, isopropanol. Uh, that's fairly readily available. And again, the old toothbrush. So I'll give this a liberal spray. And then just gently remove all of the all of the crud. Uh, the buttons up here, these are the this is the number pad, so they're the more frequently used and the cursor sort of arrows and OK buttons. Uh, here's ones down the bottom uh, for a DVD player or something, so they're probably not very much used. Just get that wiped right down. Uh, let, that, uh, let that evaporate. So the parts that were cleaned in uh, just washing up liquid and hot water, little toothbrush, make sure we get all the crud out from, from the buttons. That's pretty much ready for a reassembly. Uh, there's just one thing I will do before that, and that's uh, to clean these contacts the same way as we cleaned the contacts on the circuit board. So again, with some isopropanol. Just do that part there with the buttons for the numbers first. Add in the center and finally the rest of these guys here. Just to make sure that this uh, these little carbon pads that make contact with those are, are, are nice and clean before we reassemble. So just let that dry. Now that everything is, is cleaned and, and dried, it's just time for the reassembly. Uh, just you can see there, no sign now of that uh, corrosion that was on the terminal before. So we'll start with the, with the front and the buttons. Leave that guy in there. Simply locates on those points there on the on the buttons. Finally, fitting. Just making sure that that uh, that that battery connector there slides up inside. So we'll start clipping it back together. Factory clicky noises. Right, let's replace the batteries. And see what we have now. So that flickering is the the pulsing of the infrared diode and uh, we can say that that is all working now. Another fix.